Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. So I have something very interesting to share with you. And this is going to be based upon a few comments or a couple of responses on my last video, my introduction video. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and spare you all the details and jump right in. So let's start from the beginning. Andres Herrera, a pilot and an engineer, one day heard of rumors of a massive sea turtle sighting walking onto the shore of Mexico. In 1947, he flew his plane over the beaches from the United States to Rancho Nuevo, Mexico, in hopes of spotting them. One day, while he was cruising over the beaches at Rancho Nuevo, he finally found him. He landed and recorded his findings. The footage reveals thousands of Kemp's Ridley sea turtles coming ashore to nest. Little fact, Kemp Ridleys are primarily the only species who nest during the day. But what it doesn't reveal are poachers or individuals with little respect or no concern stomping on and hurting these turtles and also digging up their nest and collecting their eggs. With little evidence that I have been able to find as of why these awful things are being done, I can't begin to tell you. But what, if you think about it, things like this are still happening today. In 1962, Andres lent a copy of his film to Fred Lockett, a member of the Sportsman Club in Brownsville, Texas. Mr. Lockett played that film to the club members, and every meeting following that day, there was a discussion on starting a Kemp's Ridley attraction or colony on, on South Padre Island. A building contractor by the name of Daryl Adams of Brownsville became interested in the turtle and later met up with Henry Hildebrand, a professor at the University of Corpus Christi. He heard about Mr. Hildebrand transplanting green sea turtles. After speaking with him, he was set on a conservation standpoint on saving this endangered species. In 1963, 98 eggs were given to Mr. Adams by Francis McDonald, who operated the fishing camp called Campo Andres, south of Rancho Nuevo. Flown from Mexico to the South Padre Island, they were reburied and unfortunately none ha hatched. From 1964 to 1967, over 5,000 eggs were collected and taken and buried at South Padre Island. In the span of three years, about 1,227 eggs were released into the Gulf of Mexico. Daryl was not the only traveling to Mexico. He had friends, one of which is Isla Lashore, who is known as the Turtle Lady. I probably pronounced that name wrong. In 1966, the government of Mexico took action to protect the beaches with armed guards. In 1970s, the U.S. joined forces in the efforts of the conservation of the species. The National Park Services proposed a reestablishment of, nest, of a nesting colony at Padre Island National Seashore in Corpus Christi. In 1978, the attempt was based on the theory they would imprint on the beach they had hatched from and return to nest when ready. The National Park Services worked for 10 years collecting eggs from Rancho Nuevo and transplanting them to the National Seashore. Approximately 22,507 eggs were relocated with sand collected from 
the national seashore and incubated in the con in a controlled environment, hatched and released. When releasing them, they would recapture them and send them to the National Marine Fishery Service in Galveston for approximately 11 months to be tagged using the live tag, which is done by placing part of their plastron, which is the bottom part of their shell, on top of their carapace, which is the top part of their shell, as an identifier for future identification. They would then raise them for about one year and re-release them back into the Gulf. The thought was to raise them until they reached a size they would be much less likely to be a prey source. This process was referred to as the Head Start process. Finally, in the months of April to August during their nesting season of 1996, beach patrollers found their first returning Ridley with a living tag, which was the first of dozens to return. Many years of combined effort between local, state, national, and international parties paid off with a substantial increase of nests from 1996 of a total of six nests found in Texas to 209 in 2012. For the big picture, 702 nests found back in 1985 made its way back up to 20,000 nests worldwide in 2012. Unfortunately, there has been some loss, but the efforts are still in effect today. In fact, one of the biggest, if not the largest current contributor to this project is the Gladys Porter Zoo. Since 1981, when the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service approached the Gladys Porter Zoo, they have been the main source to fund the Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle Project. And that's it, folks. I apologize on how short or how blunt some of the information was. I appreciate your all's patience. And I look forward to creating more videos. This is my now my first official video that I let out. The uh, links to the websites that I got the images from, the information that I got from, are all going to be within the description. Please uh, give a like. Please subscribe if you would like to see more videos. If you have any questions or if you would like to ask me anything or if you would like me to create another video on another topic, please leave a comment. Thank you so much, everybody.